Legends, I hope you're all amazing. On today's video, I want to show you how I've got my rack rig set up and how you can wire up an 80s style rack rig using a preamp, multiple effects units, and a line mixer. Before we do, I'll give you a very quick rundown of how this setup works. You're about to hear the Synergy TDLX module set clean. I'm going to run it dry. Then I'm going to add the Clark Technic BBD320 stereo chorus. Then I'll add the Lexicon PCM81 for some reverb down here. I'll just move the headstock. And then I'll add detune and delay using the Eventide Eclipse. And this is all manageable using this Samson SM10 line mixer up here. So I'll start with a clean sound, chorus, reverb, and then extra grease on top. Check it out. That's the sound we all know and love. I'll let you hear the Bogner Uberschall module with all those wet effects on there as well. So to set this up, you will obviously need all the ingredients I just listed. You will need cables and a guitar and you know a stereo power amp or some kind of downstream power amp and cabinet emulation like I'm using at the moment. I'm just using my AxeFX for that just because it's convenient at the moment. The one real special thing you will need though is one of these or preferably two of them. So this is a TRS to dual TS cable and we will need these to manage the monitor and effect sends on the SM10. So I'll talk you through the setup very quickly. I'm obviously plugging my guitar straight into the preamp in here. Then the preamp, its output is going into the stereo chorus. This is an analog chorus here. And in addition to providing chorusing, which we love on clean sounds, it is splitting our signal. Well, I shouldn't say splitting. It is creating a stereo signal out of that mono signal. So it's mono in to this big chorus unit here. That's coming stereo out. And I'm plugging that into a channel on the SM10. I've used channel three for this example. Then the real magic happens. Let's say we wanted to add the reverb in there. What we want to do is run the reverb on the reverb unit itself 100% wet so that it's only going to output reverb. No dry signal in there. A lot of people would refer to this as a kill dry setup and most units provide some kind of global control that lets you do that. So what we're going to do with the SM10 is we are going to take the effects send and we're going to plug it in to the two inputs of the PCM81. This is where you need this TRS to TS cable. So we're coming stereo out of an effects send on the SM10, stereo in to the PCM81. Then I'm going to come stereo out of the PCM81. I'm going to plug that in, in this case, to channel 5 on the SM10. Now, channel 5 is going to manage my wet reverb signal. I can then repeat the process for the Eventide Eclipse, but in this case, I'm going to use the monitor send on the Eclipse. Now, the difference between the monitor send and the effect send on the SM10 is that the monitor send is what we would call pre fader. What this means that if I mute my main channel, but I'm sending signal in to this particular unit, the Eclipse, no matter what, whether I've got my main signal muted or not, the Eclipse is still going to output a signal and the mixer is going to give us something like that. So that would be really handy in a case where you're using some kind of modulation effect and you want that effect 100% wet. However, if I mute my main channel on here, the effect send is actually going to be cut off. So the effect send is post fader. The monitor send is pre fader on the SM10. It's a subtle difference, but it is really, really important. For the way I use it, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. There's two stereo auxiliary sends on here, and I come out of them in stereo, stereo into these units, stereo out of them. And then I can control the relative volumes of them 
on the SM10. So I'll give you an example of that really quickly. Let's check that this all works. You can see that I've got channel three unmuted and I've got the effect and the monitor send up at around halfway. Channel four and channel five are muted. So this is just gonna be my dry sound. I've also got the dimension mode to off on the Clark Technic. So it's just gonna be my dry guitar sound. I'll play really quickly, then I'll turn the chorus on. Next up, I'm gonna unmute channel four. This is the Eventide Eclipse and I've got it set up for stereo detune. So I'm getting stereo chorus layered with stereo detune on the monitor set. Very, very lush indeed, you know, that is a sound. What's interesting about the monitor send, it is a pre-fader send. So if I mute my main channel three, I'm still gonna have signal being sent to the Eclipse. And this is really useful if you wanna use this for modulation effects or, you know, you want auto panners or chopped up glitchy sounds. So let's just do that. I'm gonna navigate to the undulator preset on the Eclipse. I've gone back to the micro pitch preset on the Eclipse now. What we're going to do is just unmute channel five. This is the lexicon and I've got it set to the concert hall preset. If you've got any other questions about how I've wired this rig together, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you already have a setup like this, please tell me all about it. I wanna know what effects units you're using, or if you're in the process of building one, feel free to let me know what you're thinking about putting in your rack and what you're gonna be using for these glorious wet tones. I really need to play you out with something a little bit different from what we did. So I'm gonna bring up this circular delays preset on the PCM81. It's actually the circular and the pan delays together. Thank you to my buddy Ryan for dialing in this preset. And then, you know what, let's use the Eventide for a big reverb. There's a PCM70 hall mode in here, which I think sounds really good. So I'll crank those up for you. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you want to support the channel, there's links in the video description. I'll see you all next time.